making landfall. Hurricane Florence arrives in North Carolina with heavy rains and wind bringing destructive damage. We have the latest on the storm and how people of faith are helping. A church in crisis. Catholic leaders, including lawmakers and Cardinal Timothy Dolan, react to the growing clergy abuse scandal. Controversial change. Why the arguments over capital punishment continue after the Holy Father strengthened the church's opposition to it. And nothing to fear. Pope Francis delivers a message on the power of the cross. On EWTN News Nightly for Friday, September 14, 2018. Millions of people in the path of Hurricane Florence are hunkering down as the monster storm pummels North and South Carolina, bringing catastrophic flooding and forceful destructive winds. Good evening from Washington, D.C., and thank you for joining us for News from a Catholic Perspective. I'm Wyatt Goolsby, in for Lauren Ashburn. As Hurricane Florence makes landfall, rescue efforts are underway to save people who did not evacuate and are now trapped by the flooding. At least three deaths, including a mother and an infant, have been reported from the storm. In Washington, President Donald Trump is praising first responders. White House correspondent Mark Irons reports. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Wyatt. This storm is having a devastating impact, but it's not keeping organizations like Catholic Charities from starting relief work immediately. Both the President and First Lady are expressing their gratitude to all those helping on the ground as the nation continues to follow the path of Florence. Hurricane Florence arrived east of Wilmington, North Carolina this morning with 90 mile per hour winds and thrashing rain. Up and down the Carolina coast, rising water is flooding businesses and homes. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper says people who failed to evacuate the city of New Bern are now calling emergency crews for help. Overnight, there are over 100 swift water rescues in this great city and we expect more. And federal officials warn of a rough weekend ahead on the East Coast. I do want to emphasize that this is only the beginning. Florence is a very slow mover. We'll continue to trek along the, South, the North Carolina and South Carolina coastline for the next 24 to 36 hours. President Trump canceled a scheduled rally in Mississippi today to oversee response efforts at the White House. He tweets, incredible job being done by FEMA, first responders, law enforcement, and all. Thank you. Catholic groups are among those lending a hand. Uh, we'll expect um, a few hundred volunteers to come out and assist over the next coming weeks. Daniel Altano with Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Raleigh says a natural disaster is one of the most traumatic things a family can experience. During this vulnerable time, it's a priority for Catholic Charities to provide staff that will convert compassionately work with families and help them to recover and persevere through this challenging time. Catholic Charities has set up a donation center to receive supplies in Raleigh. It's requested 90,000 water bottles, 1,500 first aid kits, 1,000 cleanup kits, and 800 hygiene kits. You can make cash donations online as well. As for more of the federal response, more than 7,000 troops are assisting as needed. Wyatt? White House correspondent Mark Irons. Thanks, Mark. Catholic lawmakers urge church leaders to get to the bottom of the growing sex abuse scandal. This week, Pope Francis accepted the resignation of Bishop Michael Bransfield of Wheeling, Charleston. He's accused of abusing adults. Now the church abuse scandal is reaching the halls of Congress. Capitol Hill correspondent Jason Calvi has more. The facts need to come out. That's Speaker of the House Paul Ryan has advice for church leaders as they address the ongoing sex abuse crisis. Cleanse the problem with total transparency and total accountability so that the healing can begin and so that the church can renew itself. So it's a very disturbing development uh, and I pray and hope that the church gets this right. Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York is also speaking up. He says he doesn't believe Pope Francis is part of a cover-up, but Dolan says allegations by a former Vatican diplomat, Archbishop Carlo Vigano, should be taken seriously. I trust the Pope very much. I think he's going to say we need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, let's look into it. Let's not be rash and impetuous in answering. But I owe, I owe my people an answer to this. The latest scandal surrounds Bishop Michael Bransfield. Pope Francis ordered Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore to investigate allegations Bransfield sexually harassed adults. 
Today, Laurie's meeting with priests and lay leaders in the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston. He writes, My primary concern is for the care and support of the priests and people of the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston at this difficult time. That was Jason Calvey reporting, Bishop Bransfield denies all allegations. In another case, a district attorney has cleared the name of Bishop Kevin Rhodes of Fort Wayne South Bend. Prosecutors received a tip. Rhodes took a trip in the 1980s with a teen. They found the story was not true. Nearly 300 people will be compensated by the Diocese of Rockville Center for Clergy Sexual Abuse. The diocese, which is located in Long Island in New York, received the claims after establishing a program for victims last fall. The survivors' lawyers say the settlements range from $25,000 to half a million dollars. The leader of the U.S. bishop says he's hopeful after meeting with Pope Francis in the Vatican yesterday about the crisis. In an interview with Catholic News Service, Cardinal Daniel DiNardo says the Pope is well informed and he's also very, very attentive to what has happened to abuse victims in the church in the United States. DiNardo spoke after a delegation from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops discussed the scandal with the Holy Father. Also present, Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston and Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles. Vatican correspondent Juliet Lindley joins us from Rome. Juliet, what does Cardinal DiNardo say about the meeting? Wyatt, Cardinal DiNardo doesn't discuss any specifics, but he describes the meeting as very, very, quote, fruitful to speaking to Catholic News Service. Now, DiNardo says that he, Cardinal O'Malley, and Archbishop Gomez shared a lot of thoughts and ideas with the Pope. Now, it's a very busy period for DiNardo, Wyatt. As we know, not only is he dealing with the national sex abuse crisis in the church, he's also under the spotlight for his own alleged mishandling of a case in his own diocese. Now, he's also getting ready for a meeting of bishops known as the General Assembly that will take place in Baltimore in November, and they'll address the sex abuse crisis. DiNardo described a meeting he held to prepare for it earlier this week as, quote, sober, Wyatt. Okay, well, just getting back to that case in his own archdiocese, has Cardinal DiNardo reacted to the allegations he did not do enough to stop a priest who was arrested this week on sexual abuse charges? Wyatt, that priest has been identified as Father Manuel La Rosa Lopez. He is accused of fondling two teenagers when he was a priest at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Conroe, Texas. Now, the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, has issued a statement, and it says that in both cases, the Archdiocese reported the alleged abuse to Children's Protective Services for further investigation, and that it removed Father La Rosa Lopez from ministry. Now, the Archdiocese says the priest denies allegations but turned himself into police voluntarily. Now, why the Archdiocese says that it is committed to cooperating with the civil authorities in their investigation. And the statement makes, however, no reference or comment about the allegation that Cardinal DiNardo kept the priest in question around children. Pope Francis is under pressure to address the sex abuse crisis in the church. Has the Vatican issued a statement after yesterday's meeting with DiNardo? The Vatican hasn't released a statement wide on the meeting, and Pope Francis hasn't made any comments on it. So, no official reaction at this time. We did, however, learn that the Holy Father urged the church in Ireland to make reparation for the abuse scandal in that Catholic country when he visited just last month in August. Now, Pope Francis made the appeal in reference to a Catholic-run orphanage uh, where a mass grave containing the remains of hundreds of children was discovered. A transcript of those remarks, which he made to Jesuits in Ireland, was released yesterday by a Jesuit journal. Francis asked them to, quote, seek out a cure and all that is necessary to heal the wounds and give life back to so many people, Wyatt. Juliet Lindley, EWTN News Nightly Vatican Correspondent. Thanks very much. Thank you, Wyatt. Authorities raid four dioceses in Chile as part of an investigation into clergy sex abuse and alleged cover-ups by bishops there. Prosecutors say there are around 120 ongoing probes. So far, seven bishops and 96 priests have been accused. The United States invites China to hold new talks on their escalating tariff dispute. Beijing's foreign ministry confirmed Washington's offer. Envoys from the two countries met last month but reported no progress. President Trump is deciding whether to raise taxes on $200 billion of Chinese imports. And President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela is in Beijing seeking financial support from one of his country's biggest creditors. Bloomberg News reports China agreed to extend a $5 billion line of credit to Maduro's socialist government. 
Overall, China has provided Venezuela with loans, cash, and investments of $65 billion. Venezuela's inflation is expected to hit 1 million percent this year. The country is experiencing a massive financial and political crisis. Fighting breaks out again in South Sudan. Just two days ago, the warring sides signed a peace agreement. Each blames the other for the new attacks. The five-year civil war has killed tens of thousands of people and created more than two million refugees. International aid is not reaching starving families in Yemen. That's according to a recent report from the Associated Press. They say many have nothing to eat but boiled leaves. At least 20 children have officially died of starvation this year, but the real number is likely higher. Yemen's civil war has wrecked the impoverished country's ability to feed its population. Around 3 million women and children are acutely malnourished. The UN is sending aid to the last rebel-held province of Syria. Nearly 600,000 people are receiving monthly food rations. The Syrian army, backed by Russia and Iran, is preparing a military offensive to reclaim the area known as Idlib. They say it is ruled by terrorists. Pope Francis asked the international community to build a better future for Christians in Iraq and Syria. Que la presencia cristiana sea cancelada propio de la tierra de cui si es propagada en el mundo. The Holy Father says there is a risk Christians will be gone for good from the Middle East. He was speaking to groups who help persecuted Christians in the region. Today, Pope Francis also met the president of Mozambique, and he says he would like to visit the country next year. The leaders discussed the strong relationship between the Holy See and Mozambique and the help the church provides in the majority Catholic country. There's a lot more up on our newscast tonight. Coming up next, a major announcement involving President Trump's former campaign manager and the special counsel investigating possible collusion with Russia. And how an update in the catechism stoked a debate among the faithful Catholics and the American public. Welcome back. I'm Wyatt Goolsby in for Lauren Ashburn. President Trump's former campaign manager pleads guilty to two federal crimes and says he will cooperate with the special counsel investigating possible collusion with Russia in the 2016 election. The move means Paul Manafort will avoid a second criminal trial. It ends this his more than one year long fight against investigators. The charges do not relate to the Russian interference in the election. Manafort says he cut the deal to protect his family. The Catholic Church recently made headlines for updating its approach to capital punishment. But as Lauren Ashburn reports, the issue remains controversial among Catholics and is at odds with President Trump and the American public. A merciful father encouraging prisoner rehabilitation. For him to come here to see us, is, it shows that he cares, that he loves, and it gives people a, a second chance. Pope Francis makes it a priority to pray with jailed felons in cities around the world, as he did here in Philadelphia in 2015. And he has another goal, protect prisoners from the death penalty. He joins Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI, who lobbied to end capital punishment. In August, Pope Francis updated the catechism to define the death penalty as inadmissible. The move created conflict with the Trump administration and stoked a debate among faithful Catholics that continues today. Seeking the death penalty says that someone is invaluable, that they possess no worth. Chrisanne Valancourt Murphy is the executive director of the U.S. Catholic Mobilizing Network. It educates, advocates, and prays for an end to the death penalty. From a moral perspective, no one is excluded from um, God's love, and no one is beyond redemption. But Father Thomas Petrie says you can't rule out the death penalty as an option. The dean of the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C., believes it comes down to prudential judgment. I don't think the church can ever say that the death penalty is an intrinsic evil because the church's magisterial teaching has always said it's been an acceptable punishment. We will make America great again. President Trump supports the death penalty, including using it to end America's drug problem. These people kill thousands of people over the course of their lives through drugs. 
So we're going to have to get much, much tougher in terms of penalty. And if you want to stop it, you look at certain countries where they have, as an example, the death penalty, and say, how's your drug problem? And they will tell you, we don't have much of a drug problem. Being a drug dealer is a certain is a certain grave offense. It's a grave crime. But does it rise to the level of requiring the death of, of the offender? I don't see how that rationally follows. The Pew Research Center says in the last 20 years, support for the death penalty has fallen from 78 to 54 percent. The same survey shows Catholic support has fallen to 53 percent. Valancourt Murphy calls it a seismic shift. There is a wave of public opinion that does not believe that we should be using capital punishment in this country. 19 states have outlawed the death penalty, including seven in the last decade. And the practice is on hold in at least nine of the 31 states that still allow it. And the church is never going to want to step into the affairs of the state in determining those punishments, provided that the state is not inflicting intrinsically evil punishments, such as torturing prisoners. Nebraska recently executed Carrie Dean Moore. Texas has two executions scheduled this month. Both states are led by Catholic governors. But Catholics are well placed to make a difference, to be moved by their faith, and to end the death penalty in the United States. And Pope Francis doesn't want it to stop there. He's advocating for the end of the death penalty around the world. Our thanks to Lauren Ashburn for the report. The San Francisco Board of Appeals in California votes to remove a 19th century statue activists call racist. The early day statue shows a Native American at the feet of a Spanish cowboy and a Catholic missionary. Native American activists have tried for decades to have it removed. No exact date has been given for the actual removal. The statue will be in storage until officials decide what to do with it. There's more to come on EWTN News Nightly. Up next, an update on the battle against Obamacare from the Texas Attorney General who's trying to overturn it. Plus, Pope Francis prepares to honor a priest murdered by the mafia. che provoca le persecuzioni che non che ci distruggono e anche il nostro segno di vittoria. On this feast day of the exaltation of the cross, Pope Francis says the cross is a sign of victory. The Holy Father also says in life there are ups and downs, but the crucifix teaches us not to fear dark times. Welcome back. I'm Wyatt Goolsby in for Lauren Ashburn. A U.S. district judge in Texas is weighing a request by 20 states to suspend Obamacare. The Attorney General of Texas is leading the fight. It aims to declare the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional. But critics say suspending Obamacare would throw the nation's insurance markets into chaos. Joining me now is Ken Paxton, Attorney General for the state of Texas. Mr. Paxton, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You argue that Obamacare was rendered unconstitutional after Congress repealed the individual mandate. What are the problems with Obamacare in your view, and what would you like to see in its place? So it's, it's really important that, that each branch of government follow the law. In this case, Congress ordered people to purchase health insurance. And what the Supreme Court initially said is you can't order anybody to do anything. You can't order them to participate in commerce, whether it's buy a house, buy a car, buy insurance. However, Justice Roberts had a caveat. He said because there's a penalty associated with not, with buy, with not buying the insurance, that's a tax. And therefore, under the taxing power of Congress, they could, they could put this all together and say the individual mandate stood. Congress just recently in December passed the tax reform bill, and they eliminated the penalty, which then eliminated tax. Therefore. Obamacare has literally nothing to stand on, and we view it as completely unconstitutional. Well, opponents say an injunction before the end of open enrollment in January could create chaos. What are you hearing from Texans on that? Look, ultimately what we want is not chaos. We want this to be an orderly transition to state governments uh, taking over this issue as opposed to a one-size-fits-all edict from Washington that clearly hasn't worked, that's taken away choice. Uh, of doctors that's that made it more expensive for people to have health insurance that really has not worked that is financially unsound and so hopefully and normally this is true the states do a much better job of dealing with issues like this so I'm looking forward to states dealing with this on an individual basis and making their own decisions about what's best for their constituents 
Democrats say this lawsuit seeks to take away protections from people with pre-existing conditions. What's your response to that? My response is Obamacare has failed. It's, it's as I said, it has, has, has ruined the health care market, has made it harder for people to get health insurance so they can afford. What I want to do is go to a, a system that states are making those decisions because they have a history of, of taking care of their own people. They have every incentive to do so. So let's let the states experiment. And then ultimately what we're going to get is a lot of states doing a lot of different things. And ultimately I think we'll get uh, states providing different opportunities and the best ones uh, are the ones that are the, 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 the other states are going to adopt. Okay, I want to switch gears because before we let you go, last week a federal judge in Texas again blocked the state from requiring abortion clinics to bury or cremate baby body parts. What's your position on that issue and what do you think are the next steps in this fight? This was a, a, an act that was duly enacted by our Texas legislature, signed by our governor. It, it's perfectly legal. It's, it, it's just requiring that the fetal remains from abortions be respected that they be buried or interned or spread spread ashes, uh, unlike now with they're being burned and thrown away as trash. So the, the legislature has every right to do that and to regulate this area of, of abortion. It doesn't affect a, a woman's right to get an abortion. It merely requires that the fetal remains be treated with respect. And so we think ultimately we're going to be successful as we uh, appeal this to the Fifth Circuit. Okay, but will both issues, both the pro-life and the Obamacare issues, we're going to continue to follow. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, thanks so much for your time today. Hey, thanks for having me on. Have a great day. Second Lady Karen Pence begins a campaign to help military spouses receive the support and services they need. Nobody elected me. Nobody voted for me. They don't want me writing policy, and I don't intend to. But what I do know I can do is I can speak to as many spouses as possible and encourage them and uplift them and connect them. Mrs. Pence says the president signed an executive order promoting the hiring of military spouses by the government. She also wants them to find easier child care, adding spouses do so much and ask for so little. Finally tonight, Pope Francis will honor a priest murdered by the mafia tomorrow. He's headed to Sicily to mark the 25th anniversary of the death of Father Pino Pulisi. The priest was killed by three hitmen and is called the first martyr of the mafia. Francis will celebrate Mass in Palermo. He also will visit Father Pulini's parish and the site where he died. I'm sure the Holy Father will offer his respect to a man who died serving the church. And that wraps up our newscast for tonight and for this week. We thank you for watching. For the entire EWTN News Nightly team, I'm Wyatt Goolsbee. We're back on Monday with more news from a Catholic perspective. Good night and God bless.